our guests we would like to remind you that uh, in addition to really. the other work that you might know for, he also holds two bachelor's degrees and a master's, so keep your going. to start um, with two opening statements and then we're going to go to your questions after they have opening statements. So we're just going to give our undivided attention uh, first to Susan Cole. So, right. Here we go. Absolutely. It's all you. Thank you so much. Hi Pete, well thanks for having us uh, to your fabulous university here. I'm looking forward to a full and rich conversation. The subject is on its surface pornography, but really what we're going to be talking about tonight is sex, sexuality, who owns it, who controls it, how much of your own sexuality you control, how much pornography takes away that control from you as an individual. That's basically what I'll be talking about tonight. Um, I do want to begin by saying that uh, having done this kind of thing for now, too long to mention or I shall be dated, that uh, there are three things that are usually said about anti-pornography feminists to ensure that nobody will take us very seriously. The first is that we don't like sex. And I'm here to announce very loudly that that does not describe me or <laughs> in our entire lifetime. <laughs> so that you will not confuse me as a feminist or maybe, you know, whether you even that word has any meaning to you or not, that you do not confuse me with a right-wing repressive person. I'm not a religious, Bible-thumping, crazy person. I, this is not where I'm coming from. I'm actually deeply interested in sexuality. I'm interested in having sex with the rest of you. And I just don't want the pornography industry wrecking it for us. The second thing that people love to say about, about anti-pornography activists is that we're in favor of censorship. And I'm not in favor of censorship. I don't think that's the best way to fight the pornography industry. And I'm absolutely in favor of sex education and public discussions about sexuality, which is why I'm here, and which is another way in which my position can be distinguished from right-wing repressive Christians. Um, and also, I come from a country, by the way, I don't think censorship is the worst thing in the world. And I, don't, I come from a country where free speech is not a value written in stone. Uh, we actually have some censorship in Canada. We still continue to have sex. We have same-sex marriage, and marijuana, by the way, is legal. <laughs> so I'm not going to like this either. Now the third thing, third thing that's usually said about anti-pornography, the third thing that is meant to silence anti-pornography feminists like myself, is a nice, user-friendly, smart, lovely guy like Ron Jeremy who's going to come and tell you that everything about the sex industry and pornography in general is just fine, and I'm here to tell you that that is not true. Now, just to get this out of the way, um, one of the ways that you can tell about the sexism in the pornography industry is to just have a good, long look at Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Ron Jeremy could exist in the porn industry or in anything having to do with sexuality because it certainly wouldn't be tolerated because like, oh please listen, because like in all elements of our culture, whether it's pop culture or whether it's the pornography industry, women get to look one way and one way only and I don't think that's fair. So I'm just starting with that. Now for all of this, the truth of the matter is that in about three years, Ron Jeremy will be over. The pornography industry is actually... <laughs> the pornography industry is actually that 
as he knows it, is circling the drain and about to go right down it because the internet is taking over. There's more and more pornography there than ever before. There's more of it and it's harder to control. So, absolutely irrelevant. But here we are. And obviously you guys love him, so let's talk about his industry and what it means. Before I do, I want to just make sure that want we define our terms just a little bit by my lights. Ron will talk about the adult industry he's in, but by my lights, pornography refers to a whole bunch of things. Recently in Fraser Valley in Canada, a young girl was raped. They gave her a bunch of roofies. They took her into the field, gang raped her. And of course, somebody couldn't resist getting out the camera, filmed it, shot it, sent the material all over the internet and it went viral. Now, I'm always interested in why it is that people feel the need to pick up a camera and shoot that kind of abuse, but there it was, viral, that is pornography. Also pornography is kind of, you know, films, books, magazines that are showing violent pornography, that is, and how do I distinguish violent pornography from any other form? Somebody bleeds. But there are other kinds of, usually the woman, by the way, but there are other forms of pornography too, and I, I want to address it, because the pornography that you know Ron Jeremy from looks on its face as if it's kind of just sex, kind of harmless, isn't going to hurt a soul. Whereas the truth is, most of the studies that are done about this kind of pornography show very clearly that it actually does have an influence on the user's attitudes towards sexuality and women in general. Example. Uh, well, a lot of the scenarios in which women at first appear to say no when sex is offered to them, when eventually they say yes after a certain amount of pushing around or convincing or, you know, force, force, let's use that word, force. When a woman is forced into sex and then appears to be enjoying it afterwards, which is a very, very, very popular scenario in pornography, if you show that stuff, to one group and don't show it to the other group, the group that did see it of men and users will think that women actually like force in sex. They will have determined on the basis of a movie, of a fictional movie about women enjoying force in sex that that's the way women like to have sex. Well, guess what? We don't. Some may like it a little rough, but let me tell you that most women do not like force in sex. So the question I'm asking you to think about tonight is do you really have the capacity to look at this stuff and know what kind of influence it has on you? Do you know that it's influencing your attitudes? Do you know that in some kind of some semi-violent scenarios of them when they were shown to a group of people that when they went to a mock trial about a rapist, they didn't believe for a second that that woman was raped didn't convict the guy, and if they did, they gave him absolutely very, you know, very minimal sentence. So when I'm looking at that kind of data, and when I'm looking at the data about violence against women, which still continues to be epidemic, I worry. I worry that pornography is actually not only promoting violence against women, which is different, by the way, from saying somebody looks at pornography and goes out and rapes somebody. Please make that distinction with me.